Hello everybody and welcome to the wine cast. With this cast it's back to Europe to have a look at the series of wines from Hungary's Tokai region. A region famous for one style, a world-renowned dessert wine, but that actually has several remarkable styles to its name. In addition to diversity, there's a lot of complexity at work in this region too, giving us a lot to unpack. So let's get started and a good place to start is with the name Tokai. Tokai, without the I at the end, refers to a small wine region around the town of Tokai, located on the Tisza River in the northeast corner of Hungary. Part of this region is located in modern Slovakia across the border from Hungary, ending up there in 1920 when a treaty arrangement separated part of the area from the then Kingdom of Hungary and ceded it to the Republic of Czechoslovakia. And wines made in the Slovak portion have access to the Tokai designation, provided they follow the production standards and regulations used in Hungary. Speaking of the designation, Tokai, with the I, refers to the wines, or really anything else, that comes from this region. What grapes are grown for wines in this region? There are six permitted varieties for Tokai wines, with three of them being particularly important. First, ferment, the most heavily planted of these varieties, making up about 60% of the vines in the region, contributes most of the distinctive fruit character to these wines, bringing tree fruit notes like apples and pears, as well as some lime to the table, and also notes of apricot and marzipan that can show as wines made from this grape age. Ferment also contributes much of the very high acid that the dessert styles of these wines will need to balance their sometimes stratospheric sugar levels. Harsh Levelu, the second most planted grape in the area at 30% of the vines, brings floral aromatics to these wines, as does Sharga Muscotali, better known outside of Hungary as Muscata Petit Gran. The remaining plantings, well less than 10% of the total, are taken up by the grapes Zeta, that was formerly known as Oremush, Coversolo, and Kabar. What types of wines are made from these grapes? Broadly speaking, wines from Tokai can be divided into four major styles that differ from one another primarily in terms of how the grapes they're made from are processed, and to what degree, if at all, the grapes are affected by botrytis. The best known and commercially most significant of these styles is called Asu, a Hungarian word that originally meant dried, and was a reference to the condition of the botrytis-affected grapes the style is made from, and, owing to that association, is sometimes just translated as botrytis-affected or rotten. The word asu can refer to both the wines and the botrytized grapes that they're processed from. Asu wines are sweet wines, and they're made by macerating the botrytized grapes, either whole or crushed into a paste, in a base wine. Essencia wines are stylistically similar to Asu wines in that they're both intensely concentrated sweet wines, but instead of macerating grapes in a base wine, Essencia wines are made from the free-run juice of the grapes intended for Asu wines. In the previous two styles, only grape berries that have botrytis growing on them are used, but Samarodny wines are made from clusters of grapes that have both affected and botrytis-free berries on them. Hence the style's name that means something like the way it is or as it comes and refers to the differing amounts of botrytis on each cluster and, by extension, in the finished wine. Depending on how much botrytis is present overall in the grapes collected for each batch of wine, a Samarodny can run the gamut from a dry style called a Saras to a sweet expression called Edish. Finally, wines are produced in this region from grapes that either are or aren't affected by botrytis, but that are processed conventionally and that are also made across the spectrum from dry to sweet wines, with the latter often labeled late harvest. Let's look at each of these, but especially the first two, more closely. Asu wines start by taking botrytis-affected grape berries that sometimes have to be selected individually to separate them from healthy berries, and by combining them with a base wine fermented from the varietals mentioned earlier. The grapes, that traditionally are gently crushed into a paste called asu dough, but more recently are being left whole to avoid releasing bitter phenolics from the seeds during crushing, macerate in the base wine from less than one to up to around three days. The must-infused wine that results from this maceration is then racked off of the grapes into a different vessel, either a barrel or a vat, to continue fermentation and then to be aged. Asu wines are sweet, and how sweet they are is indicated by a rating based on putunyosh. 
A putoni is a unit of weight equal to a basket holding 25 kilograms, or about 55 pounds of botrytis-affected grapes. And the putonior scale originally indicated the number of these baskets that were added to a 136-liter cask of base wine, called a gonz, to begin the maceration process. So, the more putonyosh, the sweeter the wine, and to be considered an asu wine, between three and six putonyosh were added to the base wine. That's how the scale was used traditionally, but nowadays, to ensure greater consistency in the designation of sweetness, the putonyosh scale has been reinvented not to refer to literal baskets of grapes, but to refer to residual sugar in the finished wine, with minimums of 60, 90, 120, and 150 grams of sugar per liter, corresponding to the three through six putonyosh designations. And for Asu wines at 180 grams per liter or more, there's a separate designation called Asu Essentia, or I should say, there was a separate designation by that name, but it's been discontinued. Why? Well, largely because of confusion with another very important designation, Tokai Essentia. Also known as nectar both in English and Hungarian, Tokai Essentia isn't made by macerating grapes, but instead is fermented directly from the free-run juice of asu or botrytis-affected grapes. Traditionally from the juice that collected at the bottom of the putoni basket the grapes were transported in, but now more often from grapes that were hand-selected like those for a German BA or TBA Pridecott wine. These wines are intensely sweet, having between 450 to 850 grams of residual sugar per liter. Given such a prodigious amount of sugar, which at these levels acts as a retardant to yeast activity, it can take years for these wines to ferment, and then they seldom get above between 5-6% to alcohol by volume. Be sure also not to confuse this style with the Asu Essencia we covered earlier. Even though their names are similar, they differ in manner of production with Asu Essencia made like other Asu wines, from maceration with botrytized grape berries, and distinguished from other Asu wines only by the degree of sweetness. But Tokai Essencia is produced not from maceration, but from free-run botrytized juice. I mentioned that Asu Essencia is in the process of being phased out as a category, and that move is part of a larger shift in protocols for Asu production that Hungary has been operating under since 2013. According to the old requirements that it still pays to be familiar with since there's a lot of pre-2013 Asu on the market, the minimum residual sugar required to qualify for the Asu designation was 60 grams per liter, or 3 putunyosh and all Asu wines had to undergo a minimum 24-month aging regimen in oak barrels. Apart from their time in barrel, these wines couldn't be released before the January that followed the fourth year after harvest, and for wines above 180 grams per liter of residual sugar, the category of Asu Essencia existed. But as of 2013, the only wines that can qualify for the ASU designation are those with a minimum of 120 grams per liter residual sugar. In other words, wines that would have been designated as 5 or 6 putunyosh. And the minimums for aging in oak and for time before release were all shortened. Finally, Azu Essencia was eliminated as a category, back in 2009 actually, with wines at that level of residual sugar now designated as 6 putunyosh wines. The remaining two categories of Tokai wines don't have as much of a commercial presence as Asu and Tokai Essencia do, especially outside of Hungary, but they are becoming more of a known quantity in the wine world, and it's worth saying a few quick words about them. Tsamorodnis are made from clusters of grapes that have both botrytis-affected and healthy berries on them. They're made in both dry and sweet styles, with the amount of botrytized berries ultimately determining where the wine will fall on the dry-to-sweet spectrum. Wines destined to be made dry tend to be made in a way that encourages the development of a yeast voile or film on the surface of the wine and that leaves the finished wine with a character similar to Fino Sherry or to the Vin Jaune of the Jura in France, in addition to the other characteristics that it'll get from the Botrytis. Sweet Samorodnis won't have the layer of yeast and so will tend to be more oxidative in character, though a current trend in their production is to fill up the cask that they're aging in to create a more reductive environment and preserve more fresh fruit character. Finally, the grapes grown in the area can be used to make conventional still wines. Dry styles made this way will usually not be affected by botrytis, and ferment is far and away the dominant grape used in this style of winemaking, so these wines will usually be labeled with the phrase Tokai Ferment. But you'll see both Harsh Levelu and Muscat versions as well. 
The sweeter styles may or may not have botrytis and will usually be labeled with the phrase late harvest or its Hungarian equivalent, keshoi surit. Thanks for sticking with me through another cast that was big on technical info. Is this all there is to say about the wines of Tokai? Nope, there's still a bunch to say about the fascinating history of the region and about how the Asu style developed, as well as some things to say about less common styles that are out there. But those will have to wait for another cast. Meanwhile, I hope this cast gave you enough information to pique your curiosity about this region and its wines and left you feeling comfortable enough to do some exploring. If you enjoyed this cast and found it helpful, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And to everyone who's spread the word about my channel on social media and elsewhere on the web, thank you and please keep it up. I'm your host, The Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly.